Hi guys, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial. In this video, we will learn calculating NDVI in QGIS. You can subscribe to this channel to follow all my previous useful GIS tips and tutorials. For those who want to take up a complete course from basic to advanced GIS, you can register at Twice GIS by following this link. If you like what we do here and you want to support this channel directly, you can join our Patreon. I will provide a link in the description below. So let's go to today's exercise. NDVI is a measure of the state of a plant's health based on how the plant reflects light at certain frequencies. Some waves are absorbed and others are reflected. Chlorophyll, which is a health indicator, strongly absorbs visible light and the cellular structure of the leaves strongly reflect near infrared light. The algorithm for NDVI is the near infrared minus the red band divided by the near infrared plus the red band. So we're going to look at NDV, calculating NDVI using a Lancetate data that I actually downloaded from the previous exercise we did in QGIS. And the point to note is in Landsat 4 to 7, the NDVI is calculated from the band 4 minus band 3, which is the band 4 is the near infrared and the band 3 is the red band. And in Landsat 8, band 5 is the near infrared and the band 4 is the red band. Later on in the course of the lesson, we're going to look at these values here and what they mean from the result that you're going to get from the NDVI that you're going to be have calculated. So let's go to QGIS and look at today's exercise. I'm going to open QGIS and I'm going to create a blank project, a new blank project. So I'm going to load the raster layers that we actually downloaded in our previous exercise. And that is the Landsat 8 data that you downloaded for Uganda. So you, I'm going to go load the raster layers. So I'm going to go to layer, add layer, add raster layer. And I'm going to look for the folder where I actually had my raster layers, GIS data, Landsat, Landsat 8 data. And if you remember, we had actually downloaded some Landsat 8 data here. So what we need for this exercise is very, very simple. You can see there are several bands here. There's band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4, band 5, band 6, band 7, band 8, band 9, band 10. And for Landsat 8, we actually need only band 5 and band 4 to be able to calculate NDVI because we are dealing with the band 5, which is the near infrared, and the band 4, which is the red band. So I'm going to load the two bands. I'm going to select the two bands. So I have selected band 5 and band 4. Then I'm going to click on Open. Then I'm going to add them in QGIS. And then you can see they have been actually loaded in QGIS, and then I'm going to click on Close. So <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is you can see they have actually a very, very long title Landsat 8 it has actually so much information and for for us to actually do a calculation can just do it directly but i actually like doing this so that it makes my calculation quite easy and uh, with less mistakes so i'm just going to rename these layers so i'm going to click on uh, rename layer and i'm going to call this is this is actually band 5 so i'm going to just delete everything here and leave and five. Then this is also this is band four. So I'm going to I'm also just going to do uh, a quick rename of this layer, and I'm going to delete everything here. And that is my band four. So I actually have band five and band four. So this is actually even manageable now. I can actually just resize my workspace. So the next thing I want to do is we want to calculate the NDV of these uh, two bands. You can see. There are two bands actually. So to be able to calculate NDVI, we said we are actually going to go to the raster. It's a raster function. So I'm going to do my computation in the raster calculator. So I'm going to click on raster, raster calculator. Then you can see the band 4 and band 5 has been loaded here. The result layer is here, which is the output layer. And then there are some actually some different operators for the raster functionalities. So what we need to do is we need to bring in our expression here. So for us to calculate NDVI, we said NDVI is near infrared, which is band 5, minus red band, which is band 4 for Landsat 8, because we're actually using Landsat 8. So it is, it is going to be band 5 minus band 4 divided by band 5 plus band 4. It actually doesn't matter when you're actually doing the addition here. You can put band 4 plus band 5. So I'm going to go back to my calculator here 
in QGIS. And I'm going to say, I'm actually going to combine the first expression first. So I'm going to say into brackets, band five, by double clicking on it, minus band four, which is our first expression. And then I'm going to close the equation first like that. Then I'm going to say divided by, then I'm going to open brackets again, band five, or oh, it, it actually doesn't matter anymore now. You can say band five plus band four, band four plus band five, it will still work. So band five plus band four. Then I'm going to close the brackets and you can see my expression is valid. If you don't get a valid expression, it means there's something you have actually done wrong here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some parameters here. So the output layer that I'm going to put is I'm going to look for where I'm going to save my final analysis. And I've already created a, a, a folder here called NDVI in my work folder. And I'm going to call it ND, NDVI tests. So this is our NDVI test. I need to click on save. And now I have an out, I'm going to get an output which is a GeoTIFF that is called NDVI test. So the, the CRS are going to match it with whatever I've been working on in my project. Then I'm going to just click on OK. And depending on the speed of your computer, you'll be able to run this very quick, pretty quickly. And you can see calculation complete here. And I think we have our, our result here. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just turn off the band five and also turn off the band four. So now I have my NDVI result here. So the next thing I need to do is I need to actually uh, change how the symbology of this uh, NDVI looks like so that I can actually just see the different values easily. So I'm going to right click on my layer and then go to properties. Then instead of a single band grayscale, I'm going to change it to single band pseudo color. And then you can actually now change uh, to the different color ramps that you want to have. So I'm going to select a color ramp by going to uh, clicking on this drop down here. Then I'm going to look for a color ramp by clicking on create new color ramp. Then I'm going to select the drop down here and look for catalog city, CPT cities. The first color ramp I want to actually use is the QGIS color ramp for NDVI. So I'm going to select QGIS. Then I'm going to just scroll down to see if I can get the NDVI color ramp. And you can see there are very, very many color ramps. So NDVI. This is NDVI. So I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to say OK. And then now I'm going to now do some little bit of computation here. I'm going to say maybe equal interval. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select more classes so that I have better results. So I'm going to select maybe 10 classes here. Then I'm going to just uh, click on apply and OK. And this is my result. And when you zoom in, you can actually see now and I'm going to just uh, enlarge my NDVI test so that you can actually look at the colors as, as we look at the result. So you can actually see the empty spaces here, which is the water has an NDVI, NDVI value of zero because no vegetation is within the water. Then the healthier the vegetation, the greener it becomes. So you can see there is a light, lighter shade of green coming to the darker shade of green, which means these are now the more healthier vegetations. And you see the water is white. And the brown regions are just where there is some bare land and some little vegetation. So this is how you actually calculate NDVI and you are able to look at the different, the, the different in the health of vegetation. So I'm just going to maybe put a base map here so that you can actually look at the results much better. So I'm going to go to the HMGS plugin, Google Satellite Hybrid, and let the Google Satellite, I'm going to put it below. So that you can actually look at this in detail. 
you can actually have a swipe tool but i'm just going to just be yeah, unchecking and checking to see and you can see this is like a forested area that's why it has the darker shade of green appearing here and then some lighter parts but actually this is not a forested area so you will actually expect to get uh, lesser vegetation than in other areas that might have a forest and you can actually see there's a river passing here if i uncheck you can see there's a river passing here that is why we have a value of zero along the river so you can actually use these to ascertain the kind of uh, information that you want to look at like for example for minus one to zero are dead plants or inanimate or lifeless objects like baby say an ocean a rock and all that so uh, from value zero to maybe 0 0.3 they are unhealthy plants then value 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 they are moderately healthy plants then six and above to maybe say one very healthy plants so any value above six as you reach the value one you get healthier plants and the lower you go to towards zero you get the unhealthy plants so that's how actually you can be able to now compute your data and analyze it so you can actually see the greener the result the better vegetation and the light greener it becomes uh, it becomes a bit of a unhealthy like region here and then very unhealthy vegetation in regions like these here where you can actually even see from the image satellite image actually they are very very fast vegetation here and it's quite unhealthy So that's how you calculate NDVI in QGIS. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on QGIS, subscribe to my channel. If you want to take up a complete course from basic to advanced GIS, you can also register with WiseGIS by following this link. Otherwise, I'm just happy you're here. See you in my next lesson.